Thank you, Brian. Well, my name is Camille Azzi from uh, the Ship Stability Research Center in the University of Strathclyde, Glasgow, Scotland. I'm going to be talking today, nothing have to do with stability, but evacuation simulation of shipboard fire scenarios. First, a quick outline of my presentation. We'll start by introducing ship safety in general and in particular fire and evacuation. We'll brief the International Maritime Organization guidelines on evacuation. I'll be referring to the International Maritime Organization as IMO from now. And the modeling approach which will be focused on evacuation and fire events. A case study demonstrating the approach and finally conclusions. We'll start by ship safety in general. The complex, the new complex designs are making safety a hard target to achieve. As we can see, those are the photos of oasis of the seas. This design, if nothing like the past the, the ships in the past, when the prescriptive rules were, uh, were made into force. So with this, we can say that the, that the prescriptive rules are outdated now, and they cannot keep pace with the fast advanced designs. So that's why IMO introduced the alternative arrangements possibilities for designers which is basically the performance-based design. And definitely it would en enhance a proactive safety approach instead of reactive one triggered by safety and disasters. Just to mention the first uh, safety convention by IMO, it was after a disaster. And after each disaster, there are new amendments to the rules. So we'll try to avoid that. Now, in particular, fires are very frequent on board ships, even more than grounding and collision, collisions. Although probably they are not as disastrous as collision and grounding, but they can still be dangerous, very dangerous and hazardous on board ships, especially passenger ships with very high density of occupation. So in these cases, either collision, grounding, or fire, evacuation should be achieved timely and smoothly, or otherwise consequences can be disastrous. Normal drills, uh, drills are very different than evacuation in case of hazard situations such as collision or, or fire events. Full-scale trials are impractical due to the obvious reasons, the financial and ethical reasons. So modeling is better option to assess evacuation on board ships. Well, in the first stage of the design, the concept stage, we know too little about the ship and thus the freedom to make changes will advance with time when we know more, so the freedom is, is narrower and the costs are more, are higher. So that's why we try to increase the knowledge in the initial stage of the design, and that can be done by using first principle tools or assessment tools. Now I will be talking briefly about the IMO guidelines on evacuation on board ships. It is required, it is required by the IMO to uh, do evacuation assessments for all ships. They define the demographic distribution of passengers for genders and ages and mobility impairment as well. Also, the walking speed and evacuation is already defined by IMO, and that's according to the demographics and uh, the, route, uh, uh, the route type as well, such as stairs ups or down or flat ground. The response time as well is defined and it follows log normal distribution. It is different for day, day cases and night cases. Uh, the response time is assumed after alarm sounds 
until people start moving, start evacuating their places. In a day case, it's assumed to be from zero to 300 seconds, and a night case from 400 to 700 seconds. Well, the modeling approach, the focus of the modeling approach will be the evacuation model AV. It is an evacuation model specialized for ships developed in SSRC, the Ship Stability Research Center, in collaboration with Safety at Sea, a consultancy company. Uh, although AV can support uh, evacuation in cases uh, where flooding occurred on the ship or in a rough sea state for, to account for ship rolling, the focus in this presentation will just be on fire events. So for this, first we need the geometry and topology of the ship, and then we assign the passengers and crew demographics, their starting position, and also the response times. Fire conditions are predicted beforehand uh, by, uh, by dedicated fire models such as FDS, which is used in this, uh, in this work. And the crew assistance, uh, crew assistance as well is very important in ship cases, and it is already, it is modeled as uh, objectives assigned to the crews. So it's like set of comments assigned to the crews. And the signage as well between crews and passengers and passengers between each other as well. The quantification of fire effects is done just on human life safety, so there wouldn't be any consideration for damage to property or even harm to the environment. Uh, it, it, uh, those two, they won't be considered. For human life safety, consider toxicity, heat, and visibility. For so, uh, toxicity, it's carbon monoxide, carbon di di dioxide, and oxygen depletion. And for heat convection and ra radiation. The visibility impairment is accounted for by reducing the walking speed according to, uh, with regard the smoke concentration in the domain and the escape route. And finally, it is assessed by calculating the fractional effective dose for each agent. And here, categories are given for the different ranges of uh, fractional effective doses. They are not based on any fundamental studies. They are just categories instead of repeating every time from 0 0.7 to 1. So they, they are given categories just by common sense. Well, as I mentioned before, initially all the passengers have assigned response time according to IMO regulations. However, this can be ignored in cases where the agents are exposed directly to fire effects such as smoke or heat, or they are alerted by other passengers or crew. So the response time will be disregarded and they are supposed to start evacuation immediately in those two cases. As well, because of fire and smoke propagation, some areas of the ship are heavily penalized, so they are not supposed to be crossed by any passengers. So the, the map of the ship is updated, and some areas should be avoided. This map is not known to all passengers initially. However, it is known to all crew members, and they can be, uh, they can be instructed to alert all the passengers about this map. The steady case will consider an accommodation area on board ship, five decks on top of that, the master decks. The two red lines are the boundaries of main vertical zones, which is a requirement by IMO to divide the ship into main vertical zones. We we'll look closer at the first deck. It's considered 
that the fire will take place on the first deck and specifically in the middle zone. So here it is. The fire will be in this cabin and the zones are separated by fire doors as well and here are the stairs to the upper decks. For fire, FDS was used, and for the heat release raised, uh, it was uh, raised. It was obtained from uh, SP experimental studies, uh, Swedish Research Institute on burning cabins, and uh, it was uh, used as input into these uh, fire uh, simulations. The temperature in the cabin reached around 850 degrees Celsius and just outside the cabin around 700 degrees Celsius, which is comparable to the experimental studies. Taking into account that the, experiment, uh, the experimental studies did, uh, did have unlimited supply of oxygen and here uh, the supply of oxygen comes through the openings here, which are supposed to be the openings of the staircase. So this fire, this fire files goes into the evacuation model. Now for the evacuation simulations, the cabins are accommodate, uh, each cabin accommodate two passengers. It's assumed that uh, the ship has full capacity. Here the, uh, the photo is showing just one main vertical zone, five decks. So apart from the fire cabin, each, uh, each cabin will have two passengers, bringing the total of occupancy around 780 people. It's assumed that 30 crew members are on the master station before the start of evacuation or the fire scenario. So running this, sim uh, this simulation, the evacuation time to two two different scenarios are considered. One with crew assistance and the other one without crew assistance. The blue line is the one, the, sorry, the red line is the one without crew assistance. So the crew is, uh, is not helping the evacuation process at all. In the photo, we can see the cumulative simulation time. So 60, around 60% 60 of the simulations were achieved within around 15 minutes or so without crew assistance. Here with crew assistance, the evacuation time is reduced, but the most important is there were no injuries recorded at all. The reason is the crew were instructed to go to the deck with fire and alert the passengers, especially in, uh, in the cabins adjacent to the burning cabin to start evacuation before their assigned response time, which, which result in no injuries recorded in the crew assisted scenario at all. Where no crew assistance was, uh, was used, we had injuries and fatalities, and most of the fatalities occurred in the, in the corridor just adjacent to the, fire, uh, to the fire cabin where the temperature reached very, very high levels. So to conclude the presentation, evacuation at sea is very difficult, first due to the complex design of the ship and the unfamiliarity of the passengers with the, sh with the ship, and also fire or flooding or sea state effects can also add to the difficulty of evacuation on board the ships. So the study here, the study highlighted mostly the importance of crew assistance in, in evacuation in hazardous events. Well, Right now, the human behavior is quite simplified, and honestly, it depends totally on the, uh, on the user input. So there is no intelligence, like the model would not predict anything. It's all depending on what the user uh, assign each of the crew to do. So there are set of objectives which will be executed by each of the crew or the passengers. 
So we recognize that further development are required, especially on this point, to improve the decision making and uh, the behavior of passenger and crews in such hazardous events. Uh, finally, I would like to acknowledge the European commissioning through the financial support, uh, through the fireproof project, which allowed to do some of this work and to present this paper and be here with you. And uh, thank you all for listening. Any questions, please? Thank you very much. Are there questions? No? Okay. Good, thank you.